Welcome back, everybody. Now, the Apartheid Museum will launch Time to Act, the UDF 40 exhibition on Heritage Day, Sunday, the 24th of September, which is today, actually. Now, the launch will take place at the Apartheid Museum and will be addressed by keynote speakers, uh, Professor Tulima Donsela and Trevor Manuel. The centerpiece of the exhibition is a film exploring the history of the United Democratic Front and political posters, stickers and T-shirts that uh, reflect their work over the years. To share more on this exhibition, now we are joined by Trevor Manuel. Mr. Manuel, a very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. To, you to the viewers as well. It's an absolute pleasure having you join us this uh, morning. It's Heritage Day, as you can see. Uh, I'm in my uh, you full look splendid traditional. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> all right. First of all, before we get deeper into this conversation, Mr. Manuel, what does Heritage Day mean to you? I know that uh, to some people um, it meant Shaga Day. To some people it mean it means you know Bri Day, and to some people it means a day just to show off traditional outfits. What does it mean to you? Look, very importantly, it started out as Shaga Day, 24th of September. But in constructing the nation, one of the issues we had to consider was how do we make it inclusive? We didn't want to take Shaka Day away from the Zulu people. Yes. So we needed, we needed an opportunity to create an inclusive event, and that's what heritage is, allowing us to each express where we come from, yet we are united as South Africans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the things we don't talk about on the coat of arms of our country is, um, is, is, is a slogan in an old language, mm. which mm. basically says we are united in our diversity. It's a fundamentally important point. We, we, can't, we can't allow uh, uh, for the domination of one by the other. We must be united in our diversity. And celebrating this, I think, is important. But it also is a good trigger for discussing the ideas of non-racialism, non-sexism, and so on, in our constitution, and the contribution of the UDF towards that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, the theme uh, touches on the issue of unity. And you and I know that there is no unity in South Africa. You, you, you spoke of, uh, you know, non-racialism. And do we, do we see that? You see, many years ago, there was a, a, an author who said that unity is not like a raincoat you put on before you go into the rain. It's something you have to build at. Uh, in fact, there was a slogan as I was growing up. It was unity in struggle. The unity mm. is built as you struggle, and right now we have to struggle for who we are as a country. We have to struggle to ensure that nobody is forgotten, yeah. and that unity will be built in the way in which we struggle. Yeah. Because, you know, the, 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 the lessons of history are the struggle against power is the struggle against memory forgetting. We must never forget who we are and where we come from, mm. and I think mm. celebrating Heritage Day uh, by where we've come from, but also more importantly, where we need to get to as a people is a way in which we'll construct this unity. And I suppose that's the reason why the Apartheid Museum decided to launch Time to Act. I'm quite keen to know uh, Time to Act on what? And well, who is supposed to act? You know, um, on the 20th of August, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the UDF. And one of the things we did was to adopt a declaration there in that declaration, we've made a commitment to active citizenry. Mm. It's an understanding that democracy is not just voting once every five years and forgetting about the rest. It's about ordinary people evaluating what is happening in their lives. It's not outsourcing democracy to people who sit in parliament, provincial legislatures, and, and municipalities. It's about everybody being involved mm -hmm. in the things that matter in our everyday lives. Crime can be dealt with if we hold police stations accountable. But yeah. also, like Metro Police and so on and so on, these must be held accountable in the same way schools must operate better for the children of the poor. We have uh, very good education for children of parents who can afford private education, but the bulk of township and rural schools are a bit of a disaster. Mm -hmm. They f free basic education, but the quality of education, quality of learning and teaching is not very good. Parents must be involved. It's those kinds of issues that we need to take up. Similarly with, with public health, where we, we see this gap opening between private health uh, uh, and, and what is happening for the majority in, in public health. But there are also other issues. I'm deeply concerned by what is happening to pensioners and the fact that so many hundreds of thousands of people are not being paid their pensions because of government failure. These are our parents. Sure and our grandparents, and we're leaving them penniless because of uh, the failure of officialdom. 
We need active citizenry to be able to deal with these things. It's not rocket science. Mm. We need to understand that democracy means the everyday involvement of everybody. And I think that that's, that's what we need to build uh, going forward. And it's not an election ploy. It's not uh, for uh, April, May next year when yeah. the elections happen. It's something we have to do through the elections and every single day. And, and hopefully uh, uh, communities can organize around these uh, very, very p uh, pertinent themes. And Mr. Manuel, you keep saying we, we, we. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're referring as we as South Africans or we as the UDF. And the debate uh, still rages on on whether the UDF is still relevant in modern day South Africa uh, because the argument is that uh, the UDF has, well, the legacy that is, has faded into obscurity. Look, uh, the, the, the uh, UDF uh, uh, launched uh, August 1983. Um, Within two years, there was a state of emergency that lasted until the 2nd of, April, uh, 2nd of February 1990. Mm -hmm. So the bulk of the eight years of existence of the UDF, uh, it wasn't able to operate. But it had captured the imagination of people, and people were mobilized across, across the length and breadth of the country. In 1991, we decided to disband the UDF formally because political organizations had been unbanned and could take their rightful place. Yeah. But notwithstanding that, the UDF is not a political party and should never think of itself as a political party. Okay. It can think of itself as a catalyst for the involvement of very ordinary people in the matters that affect their everyday lives. And that is, that is what we'd like to pick up on. When I say we, I speak as a South African. Mm. I, don't want to be, I don't want to be pigeonholed uh, as coming from a political party. I think all of us as South Africans must be involved regardless of how we will vote in the next election, we must understand that democracy depends on the involvement of each and every one of us. And uh, just uh, picking up on that uh, point you've made on the involvement, or rather the UDF as the catalyst for the involvement of all South Africans uh, in the public discourse. So what is the role or the contribution of the UDF in terms of uh, making people understand what freedom is? Freedom is, you know, the state has basic responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is the protection of citizens. Okay. Protection of citizens means that where people do wrong things, there must, be, there must be consequences. So you need a criminal justice system that works. Ours in South Africa fails to serve the majority of people. We need a focus on safety and security so that the acid test is, can my wife or your mother walk alone at night? It's a fundamentally important test how safe we feel in South Africa and whether the state takes the lives of people seriously, it must root out crime and ensure that those who, who, who are involved in, in, in criminal activities are actually prosecuted uh, and, and imprisoned. <coughs> the other responsibility is to provide public services, mm -hmm. healthcare, education, uh, uh, social welfare, uh, all of those kinds of services, uh, and, and with the, the notion of public services, of course, good quality roads and infrastructure. That's what the state has to do. Uh, and I think we as ordinary citizens must And the state hold. has been accused of failing, on, uh, failing to deliver such services. All of those services. Are these some of the issues that you'll be touching on in your address this afternoon? I, I will touch on those issues and, 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 and try and motivate people uh, to be involved, to be more alert to the okay. issues that matter and ensure that we can reclaim our place in a democratic South Africa. It's a South Africa that, that works for all of us. It's a democracy that involves all of us. And, and the quality of that democracy is measured in the quality of lives of our people. Mm. All right. Please share details about this event. So the event uh, starts at 10.30. Uh, there's, a, there's a photographic exhibition uh, and, and, and a movie about the life of the UDF, it's a short. The, 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 the UDF was a very short blip in the history of South Africa. A uh, couple of speeches, uh, Tuli okay. Madonsela, Tessa Dooms and I will be amongst the speakers there. Right. But the idea is not just to attend the event, it's an open event at the Apartheid Museum in Crown Mines, uh, but it's also uh, an attempt to try and stimulate activity wherever people find themselves. Mm -hmm. I say from Kobo to Meadowlands to Mitchell's Plain. We need everybody For involved sure. across the country.
for sure. Mr. Manuel, lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Great stuff. Well, we just spoke to former anti-apartheid activist Trevor Manuel, who will be speaking alongside Professor Tulima Donsela at the launch of the Time to Act, the UDF 40 exhibition up happening at the Apartheid Museum this afternoon.